Hi, I'm Michelle Shelfont, psychotherapist, holistic life coach, and human, just like you, learning to navigate life's challenges. With over 25 years experience, I teach people how to get healthy using the adult chair model. The adult chair model is where simple psychology meets grounded spirituality, and it teaches us how to become healthy adults. From anxiety and depression to codependency and relationship issues, you can use the adult chair for just about anything. Each week, I share practical tips, tools, and advice from myself and a wide range of experts on how to get unstuck, how to live authentically, and how to truly love yourself all while sitting in your adult chair. Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast, where we talk all about how to live as happier, healthier adults. Yes, because you know what, you guys, being human can be really, really hard sometimes, whether it be hard relationships that we're in or even just being, I'm telling you, with ourselves. Sometimes it can be difficult. We sit in pain, we suffer. Sometimes we're suffering for a little bit or days or months or years. It's hard being a human. And this is why I love to have on the show people that teach us and inspire us to get out of suffering, to help us to find happiness. We're, you know what, sometimes, including myself, I'm like, where's the happiness? I don't even know where it is. I can't find it. So today's guest is no different. Yoni Butler is joining us today. And we're talking all about going from really a low place. Um, She's going to talk about depression, from depression to being an inspirational leader. She has quite the story. I'm really happy to have her on. And I want to remind you that if you're someone that likes to live in their adult chair and likes to be an inspiration for others, or if you need some help. This is exactly why I created the Adult Chair Closed Facebook group. It's a place where you can be vulnerable. You can share what's going on in your life. And you've got people in there to support you and help you find your way into your adult chair and to become happier and healthier. So head on over to Facebook, the Adult Chair Closed group, You have some questions you have to answer, and then you will be let in if you answer those questions. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in there. All right. Let us talk a little bit about Ioni Butler. She is a British film, television, and voiceover actress based in LA with numerous credits, including Marvel's Black Widow, a leading role in a motion picture that premiered on the sci-fi network, as well as guest starring in hit TV shows on CBS, Spike TV, TLC, BBC, and many others. She's an entrepreneur and the founder of Uplifting Content, a social media platform followed by over 1.4 million people. And she's also the author of Uplifting Stories. Sick and tired of the depressing news cycle and negative media, Ioni launched Uplifting Content, a hub of inspiration in an online community, producing and sharing positive videos, blogs, and stories. Her mission is to remind people of the good in the world, live their spirits, and motivate them to make a difference in the world. This was such a good show. I cannot wait to hear what you think about my discussion and lovely chat with the beautiful Inside and Out Ioni Butler. So welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast, Ioni Butler. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I was just sharing with you. I'm really excited to have you on because we have a lot, lots to talk about. We definitely have some things in common and Mm -hmm. I love to start out with your story. So how did you become who you are today? You've got this lovely book, which I was reading and I love this uplifting Uplifting stories. stories. Yeah. And you have a great story because I know that you're in the book too. I just read that. So tell us about you. Sure. Um, So it wasn't always a a very positive start. I was a very uh, depressed, sad, uh, quite lonely child. I, for the longest time, I thought that it, the term when you only have one kid is when you're a lonely child. That's what I thought it was. I only realized it was only five years ago um but it was it it wasn't great um I was in my head a lot it was a horrible person to myself and it Mm. kind of uh, went into my 
teenage years, which is really difficult. Um, deciding that I wanted to pursue acting in an acting career with just depression and just a horrible self-talk was really, um, mm -hmm. just really unpleasant. Um, and so throughout these different stages of my life, when I've been feeling really, really low, I've always wanted to find a way of sort of getting out of it because as much as I've been in that state, I'm a, I'm a go-getter. I like to make things happen. I don't just like wallowing and you know, I like to make things happen. And I would be really depressed and want to find something, just want to watch something that really could lift me up or, you know, I wanted to find stuff. It was like before YouTube was a thing. And I don't even think when YouTube started, I would have thought to have looked on there at the time. I was always like seeking something, feel good, uplifting stuff. And so that was kind of the basis of uplifting content when it came around to create a, a hub on the internet, like a, some real estate on social media that was not awful and um, polarizing and upsetting, but a place where just the stuff that you find is uplifting. And with the team that I work with finding content, the one question I ask for it, it just for anything is, is a really good yardstick is, does it make you feel good? If you watch it or read it or listen to it, are you left feeling good? And, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of a hang up where they find something interesting, but, and it, but it, it's kind of sad, really. And I'm like, well, no, that's not the rule. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, uplifting content was just born of this idea of a hub of inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, and it's developed over the years, uh, social media uh, Facebook changed algorithms a few years back, which made it really hard to reach this beautiful audience that we'd got all this time and effort I'd put into growing a really lovely audience that were using the page to kind of connect with and find, you know, great stuff. Now they were no longer seeing any of our posts. So that was really upsetting. Oh, wow. And so that was sort of how the idea for the book came about as finding another medium to get this message out into the world. Um, and so, yeah, I've, I've been on an interesting journey and, and I, I wouldn't say that I've quite healed depression I think that it's a thing that comes and goes a lot but I have got so much better at managing it and um, helping I've got tools basically which help me kind of get through that I, I see it's sort of like a, a wave like a roller coaster it's sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not and that wave has tapered out a little bit over the last few years as I've become just better at dealing with things and um, so it's it kind of comes that comes and goes but I've got some tools I love that. I have a similar story as well as, is feeling very depressed and negative ruminating thoughts when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. you know, and not knowing like, what is that? Like I, I didn't, there wasn't, why even, do I feel so sad all the time? Yeah. What, yeah. what is going on and who's talking mm. to me like this? Oh, it's me. What do you know? Mm. So of course it leads to depression. You mentioned tools. Like what are, what were some of the things that you use to help get you, get yourself out? And I understand the uplifting stories. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, but what else, like what, what, what helps you? Did you find a huge catalyst was, uh, reading the book, the power of now, because mm -hmm. up until that point, I had no idea. Uh, there was no recogn recognition that the thoughts that I was thinking, I, I did, I, I wasn't even aware that what I, that was what I was doing. And it was horrible. I had a mantra that was, I hate myself. I hate myself. I hate myself oh. all the time. It would be relentless. And I just thought that, and, and it's kind of miraculous now. And I have to sort of check myself and remind myself that there's people that are still in that place. And that's why it's important to carry on doing this work because it's horrible. Mm -hmm. um, but the biggest change was recognizing that those thoughts aren't true. I can change those thoughts. And when I changed those thoughts, I felt so much better. And a big thing that helped is it's a very English way to not be, um, uh, to, it, it's, it's quite American to, you know, be confident and proud. And mm -hmm. I love myself. That's a kind of an American thing. It's not very British, but very modest and to a detriment. And so just me saying, I love myself, I felt cringeworthy about that. Mm -hmm. And so when I, but I had to realize that it, it was okay for me to have the mantra, I hate myself. So why is it not okay to, 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 when I catch myself doing it, stop and change it to, I love myself, I love myself. And it felt very awkward for quite a while. I persevered and I was like, oh, you can change what you say. And it just takes time to kind of retrain yourself to say better things and be kinder. So that was a huge thing that changed everything. I remember reading that book and just like, <gasps> wow. Um, and uh, so that was one thing. And then just, just going on this journey of self-care, um, mm. looking after myself, um, 
spending more time in nature that's really important to me not being on devices all the time I have a bit of a conflict you know having a, a company that's founded uh, based around a social media platform but they're not wanting anyone to be online you know <laughs> like I struggle <laughs> with that a lot but um so yeah. just, just trying to untether myself from technology and, and focus on connecting with people that's been really important um traveling a lot that's kind of my to me, traveling is one of the things that just reminds me of what life is, being out of my routine, my bubble, my box, and then just seeing different people's lives and how people live. And it, I get, I come back from trips so inspired. Um, that's been really helpful. And then just things like meditation and yoga, exercise, which I don't do enough of, which I really need to, um, and eating better. I have this saying, which is you, you, people say you are what you eat, which is quite a well-known saying. Mine is you are what you consume because it's more than what you mm -hmm. eat. It's everything we put, we take in has an impact and so be mindful of what you're putting in because it affects your body it affects your mind everything negatively or positively so just be mindful of that um consume good things <laughs> that is so true um and i and i love everything that you just said the power of now and self-care mm. and meditate all of those things are so important just shifting your thoughts and be, becoming aware yeah. and i think that people don't realize that we are able to number one, witness our thoughts and number two, change those thoughts. And it's right. hard. I had the, I hate myself too. So I get that. Mm. And it was hard. I was like, who is screaming? Who is that? And to say, yeah. oh, wait, I love myself. I couldn't go that to that extreme. I remember just saying, maybe I'm okay. Right. And then I went to, maybe I like myself. And then I got right. comfortable with that. And then I was like, maybe I am, maybe I love myself. Maybe I am. Yeah. Am I worthy yeah. of that? You know, it was just like, Ooh, but it does work. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, I like also when you said what we're consuming. So talk to us about, you said media. Well, you said social media, yeah. but how does media impact our emotional well-being? In every way. I mean, one of the things that I noticed when I started to kind of begin to have an awareness of why the, the depression was a big trigger for me was watching the news, world news, mm -hmm. feeling hopeless. We've got no hope everybody's awful, nothing's going to change, politicians are corrupt, governments, but like all these just awful. Yeah. And it was so, uh, I mean, debilitating, it would, it would tank me. And so that was one thing that I had to stop consuming for my own mental health. And when I stopped watching the news, I immediately felt better. Yeah. And so uh, that's one of the big things, social media to um, just watch who you're following, don't engage in these arguments. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, and it's really hard to because they are those platforms are designed to like feed us stuff. So even if you're not trying to, you get sucked into it because that's how they're designed. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the TV violence on TV. I'm incredibly sensitive. I have nightmares about everything. I have to. My boyfriend knows we have to watch something nice and fluffy right before we go to bed because if we watch something, we, I'm watching uh, Better Call Saul at the moment, and it's yeah. not even that crazy. But I'm like <laughs> having nightmares about it, so you have to watch something nice afterwards. So you know the TV shows that you're watching, the the podcasts you're listening to, all of these things. Just if you haven't done it before, just take a just stop and think. How do I feel after that? And if it's mm -hmm. frustrated or angry or you know, annoyed, recognize that that perhaps is not the best thing to be consuming. Um, I think it's important to, there was a time where I was like, no news whatsoever. I just want to be oblivious to all of it. And I don't think that's the best idea, burying your head in the sand. In the sand. Um, but if you are going to be educated to know what's going on, seek out sources, read up on a thing and then stop, you know? Yes. And then a, another thing that I think is also important is to take action, which is a big part of what the book is about. At the end of every story, there's an action or an exercise um, so that you're not just like a passive observer. You're not just reading about the, the war in the Ukraine and feeling sorry for people, that you actually do a thing. And so uh, for me, I just was just horrified and really upset by it. And so it was donating to a, an organization and it was such a small thing, but it was like, okay, I've done a thing. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to stop. And now I'm not going to take the, the sadness and the sorrow around with me for the rest of the day and try to let it go because we don't serve anybody when we're that mm -hmm. low and sad and depressed. And so, yeah, you don't, you don't help anybody by, by just feeling sad all the time about that situation. Um, take an action and then go out your day and spread love, you know? Yes. So. Amen, sister. Let me just tell you, mm. <laughs> that media... <clears throat> 
whether it be TV or social media, I agree with you. It just feels like it's so divisive. Like it's like, Uh it's, it's, you're either over here or over there. And I'm with you. I gave up news and I went cold Turkey and everything. And then I thought, well, I need to know a little bit about what's going on. So I'd ask my husband, like, can you tell me highlights? Um, And then I started reading um, just in the morning, just a little bit, just to keep me in the know, just a very little bit. But like you, I recognized how did it make me feel when I was done? And I would, yeah. this is a few years ago, honestly, it's probably it's like four, four years ago or so I get on social media. Now I have my business accounts because I want to uplift people much like you're doing my accounts. I'm about uplifting and teaching and helping and helping people live in their heart and heal those I love, but the general, like my Facebook account, just personal, I, I was finished with those years ago because yeah. it was like, it, it, I would get off Toxic. and I would be so anxious And I said, this is not fun. Like, I only want to do things that are fun. And this person feels this way. It was so like, I I just, I I got off and I felt so much better. Yeah. And I think we need to all pause and ask ourselves, how does it make you feel when you're done watching the news, watching the local news, watching the world news, watching, getting on Facebook, where are you spending your time? Because it does affect your mental health and your emotional health. Let's face it. Yeah. Um, Talk about overcoming adversity and post-traumatic growth. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm just trying to think because just from what you said there, just got me all like. Yeah, go. Yeah, Um, for sure. Yeah, it's a shame because what I really love about social media is seeing my friends, family, kids Mm -hmm. grow and stuff like that. You know, I'm from England. I live in the US. It's nice to see my friends and the kids and stuff. Yeah. And so it's, it's a shame when you have to then like, not go on it at all and then miss all those beautiful moments and so one of the things if you're really serious about you know the, the social media is perhaps you could just go and like hide or block people who you don't even have to yep. unfriend them hide and block people that are just arguing or provocative or whatever yeah. and then you know favorite the people that you like seeing um and just follow those people where you know you can just connect with loved ones and see them and then another thing which kind of adds to the thing is rather than just watch comment connect pick up the pick up the phone and call them if you're reminded of them you know because the whole point of social media that was supposed to be connected and it's a lot of the time not um sorry I just had to say that no 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 I you know what and I learned that many years ago like you can mute people on Facebook yeah it's great someone (laughs) hide them on Instagram too friending them it's just like Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear all of the fear so I pushed it I you know I'm still friends with them but yeah that's funny I agree with you Um, I agree but Yes, the post-traumatic growth thing I thought was really fascinating. So um, the Uplifting Stories book, there's it's broken down into six chapters and there's stories, uh, but there's chapters about uh, human connection, overcoming adversity, pursuing your passion and purpose and things. And then there's like a little introduction for each chapter. And I was fascinated by this idea of post-traumatic growth because we've all heard of PTSD. Yeah. Um, and um, it's basically after a, a traumatic experience um, using that for for growth, for good, for having some like positive transformative change. And, you know, for example, somebody has a near-death experience and then they decide that they know want to, they just change their life after that. They, they come around and they completely have a career change or they leave a toxic relationship or they do something that is positive based on that experience. And I feel like for us, we've both dealt with depression and had awful experiences with that and then used that to do really good work and help other people that are going through it. That to me is like an idea of post-traumatic growth. And I kind of wanted to, the reason that I wanted to say that in the book is because when you're feeling really, when you're going through something awful, um, just having that hope that on the other side of it, there could be this like butterfly effect, you know, you're, you're coming out of a cocoon and now you're a butterfly. That is, that's, that's possible. It's happened to people. It's possible. It can happen to you. It's just how you get through this, trauma this experience and so yeah I just think that it's a really a thing that's not talked about enough you know why don't we talk about post-traumatic growth more it's beautiful so and I love that and uh our stories are so powerful they're so powerful however when we get stuck in them Mm. we just spin in circles you know and we can't move forward so I love what you talk about um taking action Yes. Believer in that really taking action. So have your story um, and then 
do something. Like, I, I love that. I love that. And yeah. I can't agree more. And I love it in the book when you, and all the people that we're talking about. So I did this, this is the action that I took and right. it can change your whole life. Yeah. Yeah. Your whole life. It was fun. Um, ta- you mentioned passion and purpose. So yeah. how do you discover that? If someone is sitting, listening right now and they're saying, well, I don't know what my passion is. I don't know what my purpose is. What do you, what would you say to them? It's really funny. Cause I'm like, what am I doing in my life right now? I'm having this it's not a midlife crisis or a quarter life. I don't know what it is, but I'm like, what am I doing with myself? Um, I'm actually speaking to a therapist tomorrow. So that's one thing, a therapist or a coach, somebody yeah. that can help you figure that out. Um, another thing that I suggest is just like trying new things, just mm-hmm. like, you know, find hobbies. If you don't have any find things, um, you know, I, I also think that just do more of the things that you love. So if you love singing, you don't necessarily have to be a successful recording artist, join a choir, you know, take some singing lessons, um, go to karaoke, you know, just, just, it's just finding joy in the things that we're committing time to do the things we enjoy. Cause I think it's very easy to go to work, to come home, to maybe watch TV, to deal with family and then not take the time to do the stuff that we enjoy. So, um, leaning more into the things that you love. If you're not sure at all, just trying anything. I feel like there's so many opportunities on Groupons or Masterclass or um, there's so many different websites now, like Airbnb experiences Mm. where you can like just go out and try to class pass and just try a bunch of classes. Um, Just kind of experiment. Also to me, a big thing is traveling. Traveling, I like to go away on uh, sort of quite long trips where you're sort of immersed in this thing and when you're traveling it's you can't really work so then I'm thinking of all these different things that I want to do and then when I get back to my reality life um, I'm just like non-stop go 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 um, with a real driven focus so there's so many things that we can do I think just again and it comes down to taking action don't just sit there and say, I'm, I don't know what to do. I'm unhappy with life. And, you know, I don't like my job and then just do nothing for the next five years. Explore, ask people questions. What do you think I would, would be a good thing for me? Or, and, or ask yourself, what are my skills? What am I best at? You know, um, that helps to find answers. Um, my boyfriend was having this at the beginning of COVID. He was a TV writer and all the writers, everything's shut. And he was like, what do I want to do? Do I want to be a therapist? And he found this really great book. Um, it's like a, like a gigantic workbook actually. And that helped to get him mm. thinking about things. So, so many things. I love the idea of asking someone else, you know, mm. because it seems like people around us know us better sometimes than we know ourselves. So if you ask yeah. someone else, what do you think I'd be good at? What have you seen over all these years of knowing me that I would be good at? Or what do you think I should try if you just don't know? Because I'm thinking of some people listening, saying to themselves, I don't know what to do. I have no idea. Yeah. You know, I don't know. But experiment. Mm-hmm. Go take an mm-hmm. art class. Go take a yoga class. Go take Pilates. Go take, chi- like, take a class. Join a meetup. And then when you know what you don't like, oftentimes it pushes us into what we do like. And then it can totally. develop into a passion. That's great. Yeah, leading, leading on from that, just definitely that, just having dated so many people before I met my boyfriend, that was a great testing. This is definitely what I don't like. And then <laughs> now I what I do like, <laughs> and it 100% worked. Um, so and true. then also, also to your point about why it's important to ask a friend, um, my friend is a teacher and he did this exercise with his class where they had to write some of their qualities. And one of the girls wrote that, that what what something like what are you great at or what is amazing about you or something and this girl wrote nothing that was her answer she handed it and he was like no wanted her to sit down and like gave her things that he could just observe about her that were brilliant and Mm so another reason why it's important to reach out to a friend is just if you're feeling low you might not be able to see the good things in yourself and so it's nice to have friends to do that Mm, that's great so we talked a little bit about depression but do you have any other tips for dealing with depression what do you do? What would you say to somebody that yeah. might be sitting with depression and, you know, the ruminating thoughts, like what, what ideas do you have for them? Yeah, it's a, there's quite a lot of things. I mean, the biggest thing is, was like recognizing what was going on that took quite a long time to realize this is what I'm feeling. Um, recognizing that the impact that the thoughts were having and changing the thoughts was a big, big mm-hmm. one. Um, mm-hmm. Seeking help was another big one like Mm. I found that one of the things I was feeling depressed and lonely and so 
I would not want to, it becomes this vicious cycle. I wouldn't want to reach out to anybody because I felt awful, which meant that I wasn't seeing anybody, which meant that I felt more depressed and lonely. And then it just becomes this cycle. And so um, rather than going into yourself, trying to, you know, speak to somebody about it. And one of the things I think is important to remember with friends is not all friends and are, are going to know exactly what to say. Like not all of our friends are therapists. Um, right, right. And so, you know, be patient that somebody might not know. When I was younger, I, I put a lot of pressure on my friends to kind of help solve my problems. And it, I realized it wasn't fair. And I pushed a lot of people away um, because I kind of wanted them to help me be better. And it wasn't really their job. So um, opening up to people, but then recognizing not, not everybody you know, is going to be able to help that they might be able to try their best, but they might not help. And so to get professional help. Um, and then just uh, those self-care steps I was talking about, you know, eating better, exercising, even if you feel like crap, just going for a run or going for a walk, mm -hmm. um, consuming good things, you know, putting on a podcast, really uplifting and your podcast is lovely. Like mm -hmm. putting on your podcast, going for a, a long walk, um, just immediate things to kind of shift you out of that space um and and it's hard because like sometimes I did not want to get out of bed and I felt awful and I think it's okay to do that if that's where you're at but don't let it become this all-encompassing two weeks later you haven't got out of bed like you have to take an action no matter how small it is yeah, yeah. Lay, you can lay in bed and watch Seinfeld Seinfeld's my go-to there you go <laughs> Yes. Oh, fantastic. Yes. How do you yes. not laugh at Seinfeld? I mean, I was, <laughs> yeah. I, when I'm in a bad mood, I'm like, I just got to put on one episode of Seinfeld and I'm going to feel better because it just starts to move me. But yeah, this whole idea of what you're consuming, you've just got me thinking it's such a good idea. And I, mm -hmm. I also agree with get out and do something. Everybody can yeah. walk every, yeah. I would hope everybody can walk. Some people can't, but most right. people can, I'm not a runner, but man, I can go walk. Like I can right. walk an hour, but you know, I've worked with clients for so many years and I'd say to them, can you just walk for like three mailboxes and then come home and then tomorrow yeah. go four mailboxes and just build up to 20 minutes a day or 20 minutes, three days a week. Every little bit helps and it changes us. Uh, Agreed. And I would say know. to that too, if you're feeling depressed, like sometimes just that being in that headspace, just like having, when you're feeling really low and you're going for a 20 minute walk, all you're doing is left with your thoughts, which can, sometimes can be just awful. <laughs> so I'm not sure if this is, you know, therapists would agree, but finding something to listen to so that you can quiet those thoughts and then just be focused on another thing that's not awful. And then having that, it's kind of like a sort of distracted meditation, if you will. Yeah. Um, Cause well, I did that the other day. And meditation I, would be great too. I mean, not, not of course yeah. walking, but a guided meditation is so great. Cause then the, yeah. they do have walking meditations. Oh yeah, for sure. But like, you have like 15 minutes where it's like, you're not having those thoughts. You have to focus on something else. So, yeah. you know, our thoughts, I remember <laughs> so many years ago, I remember I was getting out of my car for like 15 years ago. And I said, I can see, see myself right now. I was getting it. I was getting out of the car in the garage. And I said, oh my God, I know what all of our problems are all the same. They all send from one thing, our thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Everything begins with a thought. And the question is, are you going to believe that thought or not? And if you believe right. it, that's a problem because the next thought might be negative and the next thought and the next thought, and we have a choice over our thoughts. We have what 90,000 thoughts a day. So, yeah. and there, a lot of them are not nice. They're not positive. So mm -hmm. choose the thoughts input with your conscious mind, the thoughts that you want to think and mm -hmm. then create the feelings you want through the thoughts. So Yes. Yeah. And that was, that was a huge learning thing from Eckhart Tolle. Our mind is a tool that has allowed us to, you know, do all these amazing things in the human civilization, but it's also like taken over. We have the mind that thinks, but for a lot of people, the mind is in control. The ego is in control, doing, controlling everything. It's like, no, we have the choice of how we think. So yeah, change it for the better. Yeah. And, and even if it's a little tiny baby steps that you're yes. moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. My last question for you, my dear, is reverse engineering your life and how to create a life by design. Yeah. What is I'm that excited mean? about that. Yeah. It's basically a lot of times we're kind of on this conveyor belt of life, you know, with like school, studying, yeah. college, um, you know, getting in relationships, starting a family. And so we, and then you, maybe if you have a job and then you're kind of stuck in that job and then depending on what it is, you get maybe two weeks off a year and then you have to sort of fit your, 
we travel around that two years. And so this idea of a life by design is reverse engineering your life is just, just to thinking about what it is that you, how do you want to live your life? And for different people, it could, it's completely different things. For me, I, my goal was to, um, to make money by doing as little as possible. Like I didn't want to yeah. be stuck. I, I look at some people with corporate work um, and it's really long days and you're making a great salary, but then you're exhausted and you don't have much time off. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, how can I, how do I make money with the minimum amount of work? So then I can do all the other things that I want to do. And how can I live a life where I just travel all the time and can just pick up and go whenever I feel like it? So that was the things that I wanted. I'm not very good at being told what to do or being managed mm -hmm. um, unless I want to do it. And then I don't mind. But if I don't, then I'm like, absolutely not. Um, and so these were the kind of ways that I wanted to live my life. And this this idea started, I guess, in my early 20s. My mom was a travel agent. So I've traveled all my life from a very young age. So that's been a very big part of life. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really never had a job where I've had to ask request time off um and so over the years so that's the first thing you decide the type of life and you might not know exactly what it is but it's ideas I want to uh, uh I want to be able to write you know or I want to be able to uh go and work in Hawaii on marine biology or something like that and so you have this idea and then you start to the next part of it is you, the research phase, the discovery phase. And it's like investigating, like what are the ways that this happens that we can do this? And so asking people, going online and Googling it, again, it's taking action. So many of us have these ideas and then that's it. They, that's, that's where they stay as an idea. Right. Um, and you, yeah, so you research, take the action. For me, I was always trying to find out about residual income what kind of work can I do that creates a residual income or what type of work can I do where I get paid on it over and over again without having to like show up and put in hours, for example. So learning about investments, property investments, things like that were things that I looked into and have sort of built over the years. Um, so just get curious, ask everybody, do your research, find out if somebody's doing the thing that you wanna do, send them a message and see if you can have a Zoom and ask them questions. Um, and then the next part is, is like doing the thing, taking the action, doing the steps, that mm -hmm. necessitate that future and then slowly doing that until you get there um and so it's I don't know it seems very simple but not many people will do it they'll have an idea and then that's it and so baby steps you know um look into it I remember I wanted to um get I have a property in Joshua Tree that I Airbnb and I had this idea uh, like it literally the universe downloaded it to me by land and as as like an investment and as you get more money um build on it and I was mm -hmm. like that's great and then the next step was to just go on a real estate website and look and within a month I'd purchased five acres of property in Joshua Tree wow. and just that was the first time that I was like this is like a real like because that idea if I hadn't have just got on realtor.com mm -hmm. there and then I might not have got to the next thing and so for, yeah it, you know it might not be that quick for other people but just like do the do <laughs> you yes. know see learn but it might be that quick for other people if they're open to it and i and i yeah. agree because we do we we go to high school we go to college we then go get the job we then get married we, it's like that's this this unconscious or collective unconsciousness right that we Journey, just fall yeah. into unconsciously is the key word there but what you're saying is let's get conscious Mm -hmm. And let's really engineer our life. Like, what mm -hmm. do you want? What do you want to do? Do you want to work for some? I'm so much like, you know, like, I can't have a boss. I just cannot, cannot. Yeah. I don't yeah. do well with that. So I'm going to have my own business. So from right. a very early age, I'm like, I'm going to be a therapist. It never occurred to me to go work with anybody. I always had a private practice. I was my own boss. And now I've built this other business, same kind of thing. I just, I don't do well, but that in a way I did that, but, um, and I also love real estate. So I'm just like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Love that. Uh, but yeah, I like this. It's really being conscious and consciously creating the life that you want and thinking through what do I want? And then right. letting those pieces come to you. And they really do. If you yeah. look for and them, it, if you look. A hundred percent. And like, not everybody has that entrepreneurial drive, you know? And so it's, there's infinite other things that you, that, to mm -hmm. look for, you know? So I just think that, this is something you just think about what do you want? You know, if you yeah. haven't done that ev ever anything. For, for a while, yeah, anything about, at all. Yeah. Think about and it. Explore it. Yes. 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 And then do something about it. So that's beautiful. So what's, what are you doing next? 
I'm just mm-hmm. curious. Yeah. You got all the well, stuff going on here. What's next for you? Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Like I was, I think I mentioned at the beginning, um, I'm having this, like, I'm an actress. That was sort mm-hmm. of what I moved out to Los Angeles for 10 years ago and started these businesses because I quickly realized that like, I wasn't, you know, being becoming a household name right off the bat. And so I wanted to find other ways to support myself so that I wasn't struggling. And so I've built these businesses, but then acting has always been there. And I've had a little bit of traction over the last, uh, the end of last year, beginning of this year, things went a little bit quiet again. And so I was like, what do I, I what do I want to do? And so um, I am looking at producing a film. Mm. Um, so that's something that I'm excited about. Um, on, I'm being pinned for another movie in New Mexico, uh, wow. which I should find about find out about soon. So I think it's just I often have these kind of like life audits, like the yeah. actual life audits, where you just sort of check in on everything that's going on. Like, what do you want to be doing? What's working? Mm. What's not working? What could we adjust? I'm in that phase right now. Mm. Of like, I've, I've managed to create that life where I've I've got like a, a corporate job that I do. I have a production company. I produce corporate videos. And it's a great job. It pays well. And I don't have to do a huge amount of hours. And so I've like, I got the thing that I wanted. Now, what do mm-hmm. I do with my free time? So now, I'm, yeah. now I myself, I'm in this discovery phase again of like, what brings me joy? What do I want to do? And it looks like traveling next year for a year with my boyfriend is something that we are planning towards. So fun. Yeah. I like, I like your life. <laughs> you got a fun life. I like it. Well, this was so great. Thank you so much. Here's the book for those of you watching me on YouTube. Here we go. It's so good. Uplifting stories. Yeah. Uplifting stories. Where would people find you? Tell us if people want to learn more about you. Yeah. Um, so we're upliftingcontent.com or ionibutler.com. And then it's uplifting content on social media um, or Ioni Butler on social media. And the book Uplifting Stories you can get on Amazon or anywhere you buy books. So yeah. Yes. And it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for today. This was phenomenal. I My pleasure. It was lovely talking to you. Thank Me you. Too.